Professor Larry Banks with his great hit Colonize from his upcoming album that is supposed to be released next month. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for you coming back with us. We took a slight break. We had some discussion. And our subject tonight has been uh, train yourself in godliness. And the beginning of that training is to not get caught up in uh, uh, pointless or silly myths of our society and of our culture. Let's bow our head. Father God, we thank you. We refuse to be colonized and not worship you, not praise you, not give you glory, not give you all the best of our strength and energy. So take over right now. Glorify and magnify yourself. In the mighty and matchless name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. This is a period where you can ask questions mm -hmm. or you can mention things um, about the Bible study that I mentioned tonight. Um, great. It's a great topic. <clears throat> um, Joseph Campbell, the great scholar of myth, and Mercer Iliada, another great scholar of myth, said, man, is a myth-making creature uh, and myths are not just ancient we have myths in our society uh, like the myth of a uh, person who pulls themselves up by their own bootstraps uh, most people receive some kind of help um, and that's how they pull themselves up uh, but there are a lot of myths in society um, the myth of the good kind in the United States when most of these places where there's conflict, the reason they have weapons is the United States sold it to them. So, um, the Bible tells us to have nothing to do with that. And then it says, train yourself in godliness. So, let's stop and see if we have any questions. Dean Flowers has a question. Yeah. Pastor, the myth number two, I don't need anybody. I can make it on my own. Would that be a form of... <sighs> Someone being rejected to prove that they can do it without their help. In other words, oh, you ain't no man. You know, you ain't gonna be nobody. Then you'll turn. I can make it on my own. I don't need you. Is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people, I think people get rejected. Yeah. And then they get hurt, and uh, they don't want to depend on people. Right. You know. Um, I never forget, I was on the plane once and I sat next to a young woman. She happened to be white, didn't matter. She said that, she was telling me about her family, and she told me that her family had adopted a brother, mm -hmm. but he was separated from his mother in the first year of his life. Mm -hmm. And she said that it's a statistical fact when a child is separated from, from their mother mm -hmm. for the first year, they have problems dealing with people. Mm -hmm. They didn't get the warmth, okay. they didn't get the connections, and that she said this adopted child, it really tore her family up. Um, he was very difficult, he was always in trouble, and that the rest of the children spent their lives reacting to things that he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, now in his case, it it was a, a unknowing rejection. Mm -hmm. He didn't know about this. Okay. This was simply the dynamic. Okay. But he was formed and shaped by those birth circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, could he not change? Could he be different? Yes, but it would be difficult. That's the extreme case. But in lesser cases, a lot of times people get rejected in their family. Yeah. A lot of times people get uh, rejected from one of their parents. And they learn from that that people hurt you. And then they try to go about not needing people. Um, people can betray you. and um, Or you could lose, as I talked about last week, my mentor losing one of his protégés and him saying, I'm, I'm not going to have any more friends. Right. Um, so I think hurt, pain, rejection make people want to go to the place where they act as if or they say, I don't need nobody. I can do this on my own. And that's a myth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do things. You can't do but so much on your own and it's very little. It's true. You know, um, the enemy has made it seem like 
oh, if you get married, you're going to be miserable. And that's a myth. But the myth is so powerful, it keeps younger people from getting married. Mm, okay. That's true. Um, so the thing about a myth is it seems to be very, very real. <laughs> and it's the basis of people acting on things. You got to remember, 75 million people voted for Donald Trump. That's right. And probably 40 million of those believed that the election was stolen from him. <laughs> yeah. When there's no evidence, there's no proof, it's just something you said in a feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. And that undergirding the myth, the myth is a worldview that explains everything, but it's a certain feeling undergirding the myth. Right. The myth that black people are dangerous. Well, when you enslave people and treat them bad and kidnap them and don't pay them anything, you're afraid they're going to wake up one day and, say, and, and kill you. Mm -hmm. So right. you put that on them and you say, oh, they're this. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think people fall into that myth because they get hurt somehow. Right. And there's a lot of ways to get hurt, you know. Um, you can't live in this world and not get hurt. And when some people are hurt, they just close down, shut down. Mm -hmm. And um, the enemy um, promotes the idea that you will be uh, better if you don't trust people. You'll be better if you don't love people. You'll be better and then when you have experiences where you trust and you love and you get betrayed, it just reinforces that. You know, but we know, we know from knowing what love is, love is God giving Christ, Christ sacrificing on the cross. Uh, and so we know that pain can be turned around to have a good purpose. And so we know that, I mean, Judas betraying Jesus did not stop Jesus. Right. The disciples running and deserting Jesus did not stop Jesus. Um, Peter cussing Jesus, cussing the people out about Jesus mm -hmm. and denying him did not stop Jesus. Right. But they were painful experiences. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus made sure to look at Peter. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know, as we say, I feel you. <laughs> I told you this going to happen, but yeah. now you did now it. You know it. Yeah. I feel you. You know, he looked at Judas and said, look, what you're going to do, do it quick. Mm -hmm. I know what you're going to do. Um, he's on the cross. Only one disciple is there. You know, and he told him, look, deal with my mother. Right. We're not even going to deal with my situation. <laughs> I'm on the cross. Deal with my mother. That's right. So, um, yeah, that's that, that, I think, hurt and pain. And a lot of people have been hurt. And a lot of people are in pain. And you, we should, it's good to remember that when people are mean to you and nasty, and it's good to remember that they're in pain sometimes. Yeah. Now, just because they're in pain don't mean you let them tear you apart. Right. True. Okay. Yeah. Because their pain should not take precedent over everything. But it helps you to put the whole situation in perspective. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people attacking you have been attacked. Yes. And are miserable. And they want you to be miserable too. Right. That's the human thing. Yeah, I don't, right. don't, don't want to be mm -hmm. uh, miserable and see somebody else happy. I'll tear them down first. Mm -hmm. That's the sinful nature. Yes. You know, and we believe people have a nature. You know, not a lot of people believe the myth that people are good if you give them a chance. Mm -hmm. Our, that's a myth. Yeah, that is. Yes, sir. So, Sister Richardson, Sister Zayana. Someone has a question online? Yes. What other reasons caused you to say 1972 was when the myth of I can make it on my own changed the black community? Ooh, wee! Oh, who said that? Who said that? Anthony Copeland. Ah, Brother Copeland, you hot tonight. Um, 1972 was a turning point. Um, what year was the Vietnam War over? Around that time, 7273. Yeah, around 7273. This is the. This is also the the. If it's not the end, um, it's around the end of the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. the first war America ever lost. Yes. The soldiers come back. They aren't greeted as heroes. They're greeted as imperialists. They come back. Many of them hooked on heroin. Mm -hmm. They come back with no treatment. No post-traumatic help, no help to deal with post-traumatic stress. 
Um, so the Vietnam, the end of the Vietnam War is definitely uh, uh, one of those things. Um, a, a number of other things happened. That's such a great question. I don't have them all in my head. I think in 72, Nixon becomes a president. And remember, so Martin Luther King is assassinated in 68. There's massive riots. Richard Nixon becomes a law and order president. I'm going to restore law and order to the streets. Nixon also came forth with the idea of black capitalism. We're going to give some scraps to certain black businessmen, and that's going to have the black, that's going to take care of the black community. Uh, 1972 was also the year that uh, the Black Panthers really received a lot of vicious, vicious attacks. Some of their leaders were jailed. Mm -hmm. Some of their leaders went into exile. Many of them were killed. Um, and a lot of people who study the Black Panthers, they mark 1972 as a turning point. Before that, the Black Panthers were a rising organization. After 1972, the East Coast had been separated from the West. Um, um, and it was a declining organization. Um, those are some of the things, that, there's a number of things that, that I, I can't quite recall. I've been fogged up since I had COVID. Uh, at least that's what I'm blaming it on. Um, <laughs> but I really think that's what it is. Uh, but all of those things happened in, in, in 1972. 1972 was a turning point. Um, Deacon Flowers was asking me about, it's your thing. And he was saying, he was asking me, wasn't it linked to the militancy? And then I, I was saying, you know, it was linked by attitude, but by attitude only. Okay, because it's my thing became, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to sleep with who I want to sleep with. I'm going to get high, high if I want to get high. Now, because I think around this time, you can check me out. You got Sly Stone in the incentive. Yes. And what is Sly Stone's theme? I want to take you higher. <laughs> boom shakalaka laka, boom shakalaka. Because the Ritzen don't know nothing no, about I just that. I do know that song. I know the, a cover. You, that. you know a cover, but baby, you got to I go back to Sly. I know the lyrics. I know the song. <laughs> What was that? Oh, wow. oh stuff's falling off of him. Watch out now. So, so, um, and one of the tragic stories I heard, there was this little cartoon on YouTube, and they showed Rick James, when he was a rising star, came to this place where Sly Stone was having a show, and he went behind stage, and he went in a room, and Sly Stone was freebasing. That is, he was, uh, cooking cocaine before mm -hmm. crack pipes became popular. Mm -hmm. And Sly Stone was so high, he didn't even notice anybody else was in the room. And so Rick James said something, he couldn't stop because he was getting high. And Rick James walked out with the other man and said, we will never wind up like that. Mm -hmm. Now the ironic thing, of course, if you know Rick James, that's exactly how he wound up. Um, the prevalence of drugs in the community in 1972, um, if you saw the movie, uh, what was the movie about the Black Panthers um, uh, with Mario Van Peebles' yeah, son? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I they went from engaging in Black Panthers to having some of their members sell drugs, which is really true. Mm -hmm. One of the facts that a lot of people don't want to deal with is that in Oakland, around this period, Huey Newton goes into extortion. Mm -hmm. Because he's got the biggest gang in Oakland, the Black Panthers. And criminals have to pay him to operate. And he goes in the drug deal. Now, a lot of people don't want to deal with that. They want to say the government was doing that. But Huey Newton was no saint, mm -hmm. uh, if you know the history of the Black Panthers. And a lot of scholars have said Huey Newton was actually uh, uh, extorting drug dealers, taking money from drug dealers. So this is around that time. So the, 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 the activism, that was the Panthers. And so what I was trying to tell Deacon Flowers is the, the early black power movement was about black politics. Mm -hmm. It was about sustaining 
uh, uh, black self-defense mm -hmm. and sustaining black organizations. But later on, after so many black leaders were killed, uh, Malcolm early on in 65, Martin Luther King in 68, uh, many of the Panthers in the early 70s, it's, my th it's your thing became more of a personal freedom and not a community struggle. You know, the Panthers thing was this, but it's my thing is a different kind of thing. I'm going to get high like I want to get high. I'm going to drink what I want to drink. And then black capitalism took that to mean basically black people could imitate white people. <laughs> you know, don't don't get mad if you you can't beat them, join them. That was the message of black capitalism, and so it it it, it co-opted that attitude. This your thing. Get you a stingray. It's your thing. Get you a Mercedes Benz. It's your thing. Have a house on the hills. It's your thing. But all of that is against. We shall overcome. <laughs> Ain't no we. Okay. Ain't no overcoming. It's me satisfying my own pleasure. And pleasure is the point of the economic system. And so you see our kids today, they're enthralled by the economic system. And this largely is due to rap music. Uh, the rappers begin to, you know, want to have bling and be rich. You know, and I mean, what is the night he died, where's Tupac? He's in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Not Atlantic City. Las He's Vegas. in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> you see what yeah, yeah. Is Atlantic City. He's in Las Vegas. And, and in Las Vegas, you're doing what? You're doing what the white folk been doing for years. You're gambling. you having fun. You're living, the, you're living the thug life. Okay? And we know that Las Vegas, in terms of the, the gambling part, was invented by a criminal. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, It's My Thing, uh, 1972, end of the Vietnam War, brutal repression of black people in politics. Um, and some other things. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that next week, and 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 and, and do better with this, uh, brother Copeland. But that's an excellent question. It it was a it was a a, a turning point. Now one more thing. 1972, the National Black Political Convention. Yes. Nobody talks about this. All the black groups, all the black leaders went to Gary to try to decide in 1972 which way we was gonna go. Martin Luther King was dead, but Jesse Jackson mm -hmm. was representing him. Right. Okay, a lot of the Panthers was in jail, but a lot of the Panthers were at the meeting. A lot of the black nationalists, like Ron Karinga, the US Movement, a lot of other black nationalists uh, were there. And they were all debating about which way we should go. Now, um, when you read some reports, people seem to think that Jesse Jackson seemed to have been dominant. And I think most black people wanted to go the civil rights way but some black people wanted to be black marxists like the panthers had become some of them wanted to be cultural nationalists going back to africa so but the interesting thing is there has never been another national black political convention and they they dealt with should they have a party but they were just there were so many different approaches on issues they never came back to that they said we're going to have another meeting but they never did they never did. Um, and Jesse Jackson became like the leader of the black community, um, the mainstream leader. But it was in that 1972 National Black Political Convention. So it was a pivotal year. It was a pivotal year. That was a great question. Other questions? No. All of us, now the thing about myth, Myth starts to govern your behavior. The myth of the cool, the cool cat. Now you gotta be older to know this, because in in Zion's day, it, 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 it's it's transformed. But in our day, you had to be cool. That's right. You had to talk cool. You had to wear cool clothes. Mm -hmm. You had to look cool. Smoke, you smoked cool. <laughs> you did everything cool. You never got upset. But that's a myth. You can only be so cool when people are messing with you. You know, um, you can only be so cool when your neighborhood is threatened, when there's violence in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But it was a myth that a lot of people subscribe to. And I think most of the men 
who are watching, you will agree that um, you you took part in the myth. You drank. Mm -hmm. You start getting high. Mm -hmm. You chase women. You ran around with different women, trying to fulfill that myth of the cool, tough man. Okay, some some of us carry weapons, knife or gun. All right, trying to fulfill that myth. Okay. And, and I think in the younger time, it's the myth of the gangster. Our boys killing each other over. Constantly. <clears throat> um, was it last year, maybe year before last? <clears throat> Some boys went King's Plaza Mall. And one group saw another group, and they started shooting. <laughs> the people say they didn't exchange any words. They just, and one of my godsons explained it to me. He said they were clocking me a certain way. And I said, it's clock, clocking, it's clocking you. Yeah. And he said, hey, I didn't like the way they clocked me. And he said, hey, I, I was strapped. <laughs> and I said, you was going to shoot them because of how they was looking at you? Yeah, you know, you can't be looking nobody. And I said, what they supposed to do? You look away. So here our young men are so caught up in the gangster modality that they're looking at each other and they start shooting. And they turn the whole mall out. That's one of my favorite malls. I love the black malls. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like them. And I love the black malls. I'll be in Green Acres all the time. As you go, when I was in Brooklyn, I'll be in Kings Plaza. I'll be down here in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. But, um, <coughs> and in Chicago, the myth of the gangsters got, there's places in Chicago, people told me don't, don't go over there. And it's where I used to go to high school. Don't, my mother said, I know you, you think you <laughs> this and that, but you can't go over there. It's not what it used to be. And you know what? I didn't go over there. Because the other thing about these myths is they get motivated by spirits. There not only is a myth of gangsterism, there's a spirit of gangsterism. And you know what it is? It's the spirit of Cain. Yeah. It's the killing spirit mm -hmm. over jealousy. The killing spirit over gangs. So, all right. Anything else about, about any other questions? Good. All right. Well, then we're going to stop. Um. And I'm going to pick up bodily training, uh, uh, part two, actually. This is part two tonight. Right, it's part, no, 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 this is part one. This is part one, train yourself for godliness, this is part one. Okay. Now last week we had another. Train yourself for godliness was last week as well. Was it? Yes, sir. This is week. part two. Then you're absolutely right, Dick, I'm wrong. Okay. You got it in your notes? Yes, sir. Ooh, wait. Told you that COVID is messing with you. Right. At least that's what I'm blaming it on. Okay. Uh, Dakota Barnes is here. Sister Moore is here. Yolanda Roby is here. The one and only Christine Caraway is here. Juanito Garrow, brother Anthony Copeland down in Atlanta. God bless you, brother. Reverend Young is here. Carolyn Taylor. Deacon Brickhouse. Deacon Brickhouse sang today. Mm. And we we are asked her how long she's been singing. At funeral, she said over 40 years. Woo! Praise 40 God. 40 years of service. Yes. Rosa Wilkerson. Oh, praise God for those of you who came here tonight. Now, oh, listen, I got to stop. How much time are we early? Yeah, no time. Oh, I got no time. All right, so I'm going to stop. But uh, I'm going to come back next week, part three, and talk about training. How do you train yourself in Godliness? Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. God bless your family. One of the ways that you train is by reading your word and praying every day. The Bible is the seed. Hallelujah. It's the seed that gives us an imperishable nature. Hallelujah. You want to live, you want to live well. Amen. Water the seed of the word in your heart and in your mind. You want to be consecrated. We, we, in our other lessons, we say that the word of God and prayer consecrates things. Mm -hmm. Consecrate your life by keeping your prayer schedule in the word of God. As a matter of fact, let's pray right now. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Praise God, I give praise. you the glory. I praise you, Lord, yes, for an Lord. overflow thank of you. interest and questions about training ourselves in godliness. Yes. Now, Lord, we, we've been on part two. We're going to come to part three next week. Yes. But let your spirit speak to us and guide us so that we are lights in this world. This is our prayer. In the mighty and master's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. God's people said, amen.
Don't forget, Sunday at 4 o'clock, the hour of learning. Men and boys reading together. Bring your boys. Women, if you want to, you can sit with them for that hour. But I want them to sit in a room with men that's reading who value knowledge. We are fighting the street. We are fighting our boys being incarcerated. We are fighting the myth of the black boy who just is a killer and a gangster. We're fighting that myth. Listen, I've been fighting it 32 years. And we're going to fight it Sunday at 4 o'clock. Amen. Take me out on Professor Larry Banks. Uh, Call it out. Call